YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and I'm back today to tell you guys about the CL Racing F4. I've been mentioning it a bit on my channel and this was the flight controller that I used in the last build which was the Mia Cyclops and I told you guys I would give you a better review of the flight controller as soon as I had a chance to test it out some more and I have. I've been flying it quite a bit. I have them now. Three of my rigs are converted over to the CL Racing F4 and I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, especially when using Betaflight 3.2 and dynamic filters, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So let's take a closer look at what we get here on the CL Racing F4 flight controller, and I'll walk you guys through the features and uh, how it's wired. All right, guys, I will admit when I was looking up CL Racing and uh, when I first heard about it, I was a little bit skeptical because their website and everything else just like reeks of Chinesium clone stuff. But Norm from Beaver FPV sent me one. I tried it on a build and, and I'm converted. This thing is pretty awesome. So let's take a, a closer look at what we have here on the board and how it all works out. So the board is very, very simple and straightforward. It includes a PDB that can accept up to 6S and will feed your ESCs on the pads around there and there. And it has a few other neat built-in features. For example, it has a Betaflight OSD built-in over here. It has a uh, current sensor, so it's gonna get that information onto your OSD as well. Current, voltage, all that good stuff. It also has a nice little uh, SD card right here for you guys that like to chase black, uh, black box logs, you can do it right here. You just put a little SIM card in there and you can record your logs, super, super easy. This is uh, usually a feature that you don't see on uh, on a cheap flight controller like this. I keep here in Canada, this is 40 Kinexten dollars. So uh, for 40 bucks, getting an F4 flight controller with all these built-in features and a PDB is pretty amazing and I'm pretty impressed by it too. Since we're down here at the bottom and we already took a look at the, the OSD and the current sensor over here, let's take a look at this stuff over here. What is this? This right here is actually all you're gonna need to use if you wanna, for your radio. So all the radio connectivity, PPM, S-Bus, satellite, everything is happening down here, which makes it super, super easy. Let's take a closer look here, see if we can focus and get some light maybe. Uh, you might not be able to read it, but here we have S-Bus, satellite, and then we have RX 5 volt and ground. So you could use those right there, no problem if you have S-Bus or satellite. Then we have a telemetry pad right there, which is super easy for you guys who do uh, uh, FR Sky. It's a telemetry. Then we have 3.3 volts, so if you have a 3.3 volt receiver, you can still use it on this board, no problem, and a PPM. I might mention to you guys that uh, the board comes with two uh, battery elimination circuits, one for uh, 5 volts and one for 12 volts, and they're each rated for 1.5 amps, which is more than enough for you to run pretty much anything you need. I'm running my VTX camera and radio all from this board, no worries, using the VTX-03 and the HS-1177. And uh, it's been performing quite well. So let's take a look here at the other side of the board. So this would be the, the, the up side of the board. And there's a built-in buzzer right here. However, the current, uh, this board is very new. Uh, it comes ships with 3.1.7 uh, beta flight. And uh, that code is not quite ready. There's a few caveats. For example, the buzzer that I just mentioned doesn't quite work. It just clicks, which is kind of annoying, but whatever, I tend to disable buzzers anyway. Another thing that you have to be cognizant is if you want to use LED strip and D-Shot, you won't be able to do that on 3.1.7. But as soon as 3.2 comes out, and if you want to run the 3.2 nightly builds or whatever, that, that stuff works, everything is fixed, and uh, the buzzer works, no problems. But I've been running mine on 3.1.7 and 3.1.2, sorry, 3.2, and they have both been running great. No worries at all, except for the, the issue with the buzzer. Uh, on the top here, we have your ESC pads around along the sides, which makes it super easy to solder, and, and it has the motor signal pads right there and there in between each one of the motor pads, which makes it super easy to wire. Like literally, this takes uh, down at least like an hour or two of my build time by just using this board because it's just so deadly simple and so well laid out. We have a nice boot button so you don't have to try and short stuff and it works really great. And uh, then we have a patching over here for your camera. So this camera here is gonna send five volts. So you're gonna send five volts from, uh, five volts, uh, sorry, camera signal, five volts and then ground right over here, and then down below we have your VTX patches and your LED strip. So you can have a VTX plus minus, which is the 12 volt back that we just talked about, and we have the VTX signal, and then we have a few other parts here for the LED, basically the LED signal, the five volt, and the ground. So everything is extremely well laid out, nice big pads, nothing, nothing is through hole, very, very, very simple, and so far it's been working fantastically. Uh, I've been flying it for a few weeks now and I converted most of, I'm starting to slowly convert most of my rigs to it and the next build video that we're doing with the Rapture is going to be using the, the CL Racing F4 again. Again, super impressed. One of the most impressive things that I've found about this board so far is that when I uh, built it and flew it on stock Betaflight, I had no yaw twitch. And that's something that's been plaguing my builds 
for a very long time. I'm not sure why, maybe it's the placement of the gyro or maybe it's the gyro that they're using. It is an MPU 6000, so I don't know, I use MPU 6000 a lot, but honestly, no yacht twitch. And it got even better when I moved over to 3.2. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about 3.2 and the dynamic filters because uh, I've been having really good experience with that with the CL Racing F4. Um, my motors tend to run a little bit on the hot end because I guess I push my, my, my tune a little bit too hard and maybe I'm not using the right props, but never. that's not a problem. Um, once I turned the dynamic filters in 3.2, that went away. My motors started to come down cold, definitely way cooler than they were when I was flying them before. So uh, that's something that I'm gonna start incorporating into my tune as much as I can. So dynamic filters in PT1 has been working really, really well for me on the CL Racing F4. So if you guys are looking for an inexpensive F4 flight controller that is laid out in a sane manner and, and is working really damn well and so far has proven to be fairly bulletproof, um, check out a CL Racing F4. This is a really good value for uh, a very, very good quality FC. I will be updating you guys in the future if anything happens with the flight controller, if it dies on me suddenly or anything like that, but so far it's been holding up excellently well. So that's all I wanted to cover with you guys. It was just a very short review of the CL Racing F4. Don't forget to subscribe because there's more awesome content coming to the channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.